The movie starts in a faraway land, surrounded by high mountain peaks and forests. This is the kingdom of Arya, and here we see the king of Arya along with his soldiers. They are trying to catch a dragon, and to kill him, as it is attacking the properties of the people. The dragon flew into the mountain cave, where she has to protect her nest. But the king and his soldiers are determined to put an end to its life, and finish the dragon's race in the kingdom of Arya. However, when they reach the cave, it is deep down in the mountain where the dragon unleashed her fire on the soldiers, burning them down one by one. At the end the king remains separated and alone, begging the dragon to forgive him. Then the scene changes and we move forward several centuries in future. Here we see an unnamed land, where a girl named Elodie and her sister Floria, the two daughters of Lord Bayford, are busy collecting wood for their household. As the two of them return to the house, they found their father, Lord Bayford and their stepmother Lady Bayford, in a conversation with the Red Priestess. She gives a letter to Lord Bayford, and as the two girls enter the room she leaves. Lord Bayford reads the letter which is sent from the Queen Isabel of Arya, proposing Elodie marry her son Henry, who is the Prince of Arya. Elodie is initially hesitant, as she didn't know whom she was about to marry, but she had to obey her father's commands. When Bayford told her that this marriage arrangement would improve their family's socioeconomic status, as their financial condition is not good, and they expect help from the queen in return. They begin their journey towards the kingdom of Arya, but Elodie is still very hesitant and nervous, as she doesn't know how the prince will treat her. Elodie and Floria has lost their biological mother at a very young age, so when Bayford married for the second time, they couldn't become very close to their stepmother. But Lady Bayford is a kind-hearted woman, who always wanted the best for her stepdaughters. At the boat she asks her daughters to step down from the upper deck, as the wet wind will damage their skin, and it may be making the prince unhappy. She actually takes a lot of care of her stepdaughters. As they reach the shores of Arya, they see dragons in the hazy weather. At first, they think that these are real, but when they're out of the fog, they see that these are only dragon statues. As they reach the kingdom of Arya, Elodie and her family meet with her in-laws as well as her fiancé, Henry. They both gets out of the palace in meet in separation. Elodie talks to the prince and sees that the prince is very kind and charming. She asks him if he wants to ride horses, and he agrees. Just like Elodie, Henry also wanted to travel the entire world, which impressed her. Queen Isabel wants to discuss terms of marriage with Elodie's parents. However, she takes only Elodie's father inside the room, while her stepmother is waiting outside. When he comes out after meeting with Queen Isabel, he looks sad and disappointed, but he said that he agreed to the queen's terms. His wife asks him about the terms, but he hides it and didn't tell it to his wife. His wife gets suspicious that something wrong is going to happen with her stepdaughter. She also can't shake the ominous feeling from her mind, as whenever she tries to get to know Queen Isabel, hoping to make a great bond with her, the queen humiliates her, reminding her of the difference between their social status. Like one time she goes to the queen's room to socialize with her, but she asks questions about Lady Bayford's father profession, that he was a rope maker and her condition is not good enough to set with the queen. Lady Bayford's realized that this marriage arrangement is nothing but a mistake, but her husband has given his word to the queen, and he doesn't want to back off from his promise. Nevertheless, Lady Bayford still wanted to warn her stepdaughter about the queen's behavior and asked her to reconsider the marriage. But Elodie is already illusioned by Prince Henry's charm and decided to marry him. The next day, they dress up Elodie and make her a bride. Both Elodie and Henry put rings on each other's fingers. After a beautiful and huge wedding ceremony, they leave for their palace. But Henry took Elodie to a mountain cave near an isolated area, instead of their palace. When she asks Henry that where is he taking her, he told her that they would have to pay homage to their ancestors before starting their lives together. He also tells her that it is their family's tradition. There is a lot of people wearing masks waiting for them, including Queen Isabel. In the mountain cave, the queen tells Elodie about the ancient history of Arya, involving the blood sacrifices that had helped the kingdom rise. She also tells her about the girls who sacrificed their lives for the sake of Arya, including the three daughters of the king of Arya. Then she brings forward Elodie and Henry and cut their hands with a knife. Then they join their hands to share their blood and take a blood oath. 
But as they returned to go back to the palace, Henry picked her up and asked her to close her eyes. As Elodie began to trust her husband, she did what she's told. But Henry apologizes to her for what he is about to do. He threw her into a dark pit, which is nothing but the dwelling place of the dragon, which is previously shown to you at the beginning of the film. After falling from a great height, Elodie is survived but she is unconscious. After gaining the conscious she looks at her body and finds that she is severely injured. She realizes that the kingdom of Arya didn't want a bride, but wanted a scapegoat to sacrifice and to pay off their debts. She looks around and find a lot of jewelry, which she says that it's not hers. It means that many more girls have been thrown to this cave before her. Soon, she realizes that she is trapped in a maze of caves, which is inhabited by a massive dragon. This dragon has been killing innocent young girls for generations, to give mercy to the kingdom of Arya. The king, who had come to attack the dragon with his soldiers, not only disrupted her peace, but also killed her three newborn babies. The dragon couldn't forgive the king for his brutality and killed him, and from then on, she became vengeful towards the king's family who carried the same bloodline. To save the upcoming generations from the dragon's wrath, the kings and queens of Arya came up with a cunning idea. They chased the underprivileged families from all around the world to offer them marriage arrangements and a substantial amount of money, so that these families would hand them over to their daughters, who could be used as sacrifices. But the dragon is well aware of the bloodline and recognizes the royal blood. So, the queens started the ritual of making the brides take the blood oath with the prince, so that their blood would mix, and the dragon would be tricked into believing that these girls belong to the royal family of Arya. Elodie is shouting for help which wakes up the dragon and start talking to her. She hears a bird sound and follow it through a narrow tunnel, there she sees a bird burning in fire. She quickly puts some sand on bird's body, but the bird couldn't survive. After that she sees a lot of birds have fire on their bodies and flying around her. The dragon makes Elodie to run and throw her breath fire on Elodie, but she closely escapes the fire by hiding herself in a narrow cave. Although her hand and leg burn to some extent, then she walks to another side to find a way out, where she sees some glowing stones. She looks at them and walks towards it, that suddenly she finds herself on the edge of a deep dungeon. She jumps through it and nearly fell into it. However, with the help of a knife she saves herself. She finds that actually the glowing stone are small creatures that are attached to the stones. She picks some of these creatures and put them in cloth to lighten her path. Even though Elodie is trapped in the maze and repeatedly haunted by the dragon, she is not a damsel in distress. Instead of waiting for someone to come and save her, she decided to use her mental strength as a weapon to survive in this treacherous area. She soon realizes that before her, there was another woman who had been thrown into the pit as a sacrifice. She is the second one, and after her there would be another woman who'd be sacrificed by the queen. It is actually a penalty imposed by the dragon on the king, that every Every year they will give her three of their daughters to kill them, as ransom for the dragon's babies, which were killed by the king. So, Elodie not only wants to escape from the cave, but also to put an end to this atrocity. She decided to get out of this place by any means necessary. After repeated failures, she finally got into this safe space, where young women like her had dwelt before to hide themselves from the dragon. One of them named Victoria had also made a sketch of an escape route. She is tired and wounded, therefore she falls into sleep. When she wakes up, she sees that the glowing creatures are all over her wounds. She quickly removes them for her feet and to her astonishment all her wounds are healed. Actually, the glowing creatures have some healing properties. Elodie cut her hair and clothes with a dagger hidden in her clothes, and set out on her mission to get out of there. She finds a crystal cave that goes upwards, and finds a crown near it. She now understands that Victoria escaped through this tunnel. She starts climbing and finally able to see the daylight. But she finds out the cave opens onto the top of the mountain, and there is no way to come down from that cliff. She also finds out the burned skeleton of Victoria, 
which seems to be burned by the dragon while escaping. Suddenly the dragon comes from the other side, and is about to attack her. However, before she could harm Elodie, Lord Bayford entered the cave in search of his daughter. The dragon quickly goes to the cave leaving Elodie alive. It is now revealed that Bayford was already aware of this sacrifice scheme, and that's why he was sad. But he still chose to give away his daughter in exchange for wealth, but he didn't want this wealth for himself, but for his people who were starving in the cold weather of Bayford. Now realizing his mistake, he comes to save his daughter, but the dragon attacked him and his men. All of his men are killed, and then she catches the lord and asks him to call his daughter to come out. He refuses to do so, and therefore the dragon kills him in front of Elodie. Elodie talks to her dying father for the last time, and before he took his last breath, Bayford tells his daughter that there is a rope that she can use to get out of the place. Out of the dragon's sight, Elodie managed to grab the rope, through which she finally escaped the cave, eluding the beast. The dragon chased her, but she managed to hide under a pile of rocks. Elodie is finally out of the cave, but on the other hand the Queen of Arya witnessing the dragon unleashing her anger on the kingdom by throwing fire all around. She now realizes that Elodie has been able to escape, so, she quickly goes to the boat, kills her guards, wounding Lady Bayford and captures Floria in order to complete their sacrifice ritual. After Floria is thrown into the pit, the dragon captured her, but she didn't kill Floria, but to use her as bait to capture Elodie. Following the Queen Elodie's stepmother reaches the cave, where she meets Elodie. She tells her that the Queen has taken Floria. Knowing that her sister has been thrown into the dragon's shelter, she jumped into the pit and managed to reach the cave where her father was killed. She took up the sword her father had left for her, and gets into a massive confrontation with the dragon. She wounded the dragon's throat with the help of her sword. However, realizing that this is an unequal fight, Elodie comes up with the idea to give the dragon a taste of her own medicine. Standing in front of a billowing structure, Elodie challenges the dragon to burn her down, and when the enraged dragon unleashes her fire, the flames come out of her throat, burning and injuring the dragon herself. The dragon begs Elodie to kill her, and brings her out of this misery, but Elodie is a kind-hearted girl, who couldn't bear the pain that the dragon has been going through, so she shows her the cut on her hand, telling her how the Queen of Arya had been fooling both her and the innocent girls. The dragon realized her mistake, and Elodie collects some of the glowing worms. She puts them on the dragon's wound, and the dragon is completely healed. Floria is rescued thanks to her brave sister, who fought for both of their lives. But Elodie is still not done with her quest, as she wanted to put an end to this foul game of sacrifices once and for all. So, she returns to the kingdom of Arya to show them what justice looked like. In the meantime, Henry is getting married to another woman, who is going to be another scapegoat for the sacrifice, but before Henry could take her to the pit, Elodie arrives there, confronting the queen. She tells the bride everything about this kingdom, and asks her to run away. The queen tries to stop Elodie, but she loses control of the situation when the dragon appears in front of them. The dragon finally takes her revenge on Arya by burning them down with her fire and killing everyone in the kingdom. Elodie returns to her stepmother and sister, and together the three of them boards the ship to return to their homeland. They also now the owner of the kingdom of Arya and collects taxes from its farmers. Elodie gives the leadership of their house and the community to her stepmother Lady Bayford, and asks Floria to help her stepmother, while she decides to travel around the entire world, which has always been her one and only dream. However, she wouldn't be alone in her journey, as the dragon would be accompanying her to her destinations as her friend and protector. And at this point the movie comes to an end. The movie gives us a lesson that life can be tricky. Don't be fooled by easy promises. If something sounds too good, it probably is a trick. Listen to your friends who warn you, even if you don't change your plans. It also tells us that true value comes from who you are, not how much money you have. Things might seem hopeless sometimes, but they always get better. And tough times make us stronger. Thanks for watching.